Hey everybody, Doug A798 here. This video was a request and a video response to Black and Fist's top 10 saddest moments in Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. Um, I've been meaning to do this video for a long time ever since he sent the video to me, but um, I was doing other videos and I kept putting this on and off and I finally got a chance to do it right now and um, and I must say his video, for the most part, was good. I agree and disagree with a lot of things. And right now I'm going to give my thoughts on the top 10 saddest moments in the Dragon Ball series. Um, for the most part, I agree with all, um, I agree with all, all 10 of his, um, 10 of his saddest moments. There are only two. Um, there only may be, I think, yeah, two, two or three that I disagree with or have mixed receptions with. And the first one I'm going to talk about is, I think, was, I think this was number 10, his last one, which was Krillin, Krillin being killed by Frieza, Piccolo being injured by Frieza, Krillin finally being killed by Frieza, and that leading to Goku to transform into the Super Saiyan. Okay, I'm mixed by this. I'm mixed by it because both of those moments led to the epic Super Saiyan moment with Goku, but, um, but, um, at the time when I watched it in the Saiyan Saga, it was stated that if you died, you couldn't be brought back to life. If you died once, you could, if you died once and were restored with the Dragon Balls, then you can't be, um, restored with the Dragon Balls again. The dragon will not keep granting the same wish. So I took it that when Frieza killed Krillin, killed Krillin, I thought that was the end of Krillin, which is what led to Goku becoming the Super Saiyan. I thought that would be the last time we see Krillin, but he shows up in the next saga. He sh he gets wished back to life at the end of the saga, which I wasn't too mad about, but that kind of ruins the significance of that moment there, because I thought Krillin was gone, which is what led which is what led to the horrible shock of Goku becoming a Super Saiyan. And, um, so, that's why I'm mixed. I'm also mixed about it because Goku, Kr Frieza just killed Krillin, and Goku, throughout the fight, Goku, Goku, instead of killing Frieza, instead of killing Frieza once and for all and ending his horrible raid on the universe, Goku simply, Goku just simply beat, beat him up, humiliated and humbled Frieza instead of killing him, which means... Goku is no, Goku is just as selfish as Vegeta is. He's not really a hero because he he was fighting for he was fighting for his own enjoyment. He wanted to see Frieza suffer instead of killing Frieza for the good of the universe. And that and since he didn't kill Frieza, that let Frieza that led to Frieza getting rebuilt, journeying to Earth. And he finally did get killed by Trunks, but before he got killed, Dr. Jiro was able to get the last strand of DNA, which was from Frieza and his father, and that led to the creation of Cell. So, the S Cell exists because Goku didn't stop Frieza, so I'm mixed towards this moment. The second moment, um, the second moment I want to talk about is, um, Android 16. Yeah, I do agree that is one of the more underrated moments. In the series, I always, I, I hate how Android 16 kind of disappeared, dis completely disappeared from the franchise after his death. He was never really brought up or referenced again, only seen in flashbacks. I thought that sucked, but the Android 16 moment and the powerful Super Saiyan 2 moments were some of the best and most epic moments. I completely agree with that assessment. Um, the next moment... Piccolo, for the most part, I agree. Except I disagree with him, with with him being um with Piccolo, not really be with Piccolo um not being um with Piccolo not being a good guy, but not being evil either. I think I think at the start of Dragon Ball Z, I think Piccolo is already no longer a villain because if you go back and watch Dragon Ball, the last season of Dragon Ball, which I loved um. Piccolo, Piccolo, Piccolo.
Piccolo, Piccolo was totally different in Z, and 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 um, he he tried to defend the Earth from Raditz. Now, even if, even if he just did it so he could take over the world later, that's a um, that's a turning point for the Piccolo character to try to defend the Earth from Raditz, Nappa, and Vegeta. So I consider Piccolo and Z to be an anti-hero up until he fuses with Kami. But um, but yes, I did enjoy Piccolo's death. That was a um, powerful moment, and in my opinion, a turning point for that um, character. What was another um, death? I also consider um, Gohan's Gohan's death in the future. Future Gohan's death. I love Future Gohan's death, and um, Trunks has ascended to Super Saiyan. I love that. The only problem I have with it is the androids 17 and 18. They're not believable. While good characters, they're not believable as bad guys, as threats to the Z Fighters. I thought Gohan, Trunks, and the Z Fighters should have straight destroyed them according to the rules and physics of this show. But that's for that's for another time. But I did think that was a powerful moment. I get what they were trying to say. Next is um. Next is um. Now here's the two I completely disagree with, and that's. Vegeta's um death on Namek and um Vegeta sacrificing himself against Boo. I'm gonna start off with the Vegeta dying on Namek. In my opinion, the fight with Frieza, in my opinion, it was Vegeta's time to die, and I considered the end of his character. When Vegeta came back to life in the in at the end of the saga, I thought what was the point? And his character, in my opinion, really had no purpose. He, he was only brought back as he was popular. So they, and in order to make him more important, they put him in a, in my opinion, a crappy relationship with Bulma and gave him a son. I thought anything with Vegeta character after the Frieza saga was absolute crap. And, um, and I felt Vegeta, the fight with Frieza, yeah, it was sad because no, I guess no one deserves to be tortured and beat up, but Vegeta kind of had it coming. What goes around comes around. Vegeta, he, he, um, he, um, he had no problem stepping on anyone to get what he wants. He even stepped on his own friends. He even stepped on his own friends, Raditz and Nappa, to get what he wants. So, and he killed a bunch of innocent Namics when he didn't have to. So, I look at it that way. What goes around comes comes around. And in my opinion, that was the fight. That I like to keep saying that was the end of the Vegeta character. Next is Vegeta sacrificing himself against Majin Buu. Now, I absolutely hate this moment. First of all, number one, the whole Majin Buu saga, in my opinion, sucked because it all could have been prevented if Goku and Vegeta, Vegeta the most, would have followed Supreme Kai's orders, and that was defeat Bobby's warriors, then defeat Bobby himself, and save. But no, Vegeta... Vegeta, a character who was supposed to have honor, turned on the group, sold his soul to Bobbity, sold out his family to get power, to get power, pretty much cheating to get the Super Saiyan 2, when he was supposed to be this honorable Saiyan, this honorable Saiyan, fought Goku, and then Goku, not, not killing or, fit, not killing or knocking him out, Goku instead kept his power level at Super Saiyan 2, which both of them fought, they fought, and both of them caused the release of Majin Buu when Goku could have went Super Saiyan 3 and knocked out or killed Vegeta with ease, or he could have, um, at least told Vegeta that he's no match, that Vegeta is still no match for him. Vegeta would have deserved it too, cheating to get power. Now, Vegeta fights Majin Buu. None of his attacks do anything. Majin Buu toy with him. Majin Buu could have destroyed him with one hit, but he wanted to torture Vegeta and play with him. All my, when Vegeta, all of Vegeta's best attacks, all they did was tickle Majin Buu. They didn't do j jack the Majin Buu. This is why, th this is why they should not. This is this is why they should have prevented the release of Majin Buu. Then here comes the sacrifice. Vegeta sacrificed himself against Majin Buu. It does nothing. It does nothing. Majin Buu comes back more dangerous and kills a bunch of people, like Supreme Kai predicted. Um. Then, Vegeta, his sacrifice. Piccolo before that said that Vegeta will not receive the same reward as Goku. He will not, he will not keep his body. That's a privilege reserved for heroes. Vegeta is no hero, not even in this part of the series. One good act does not rule out a lifetime of villainy, especially if this one good act 
especially if this one good act is your fault in the first place. Um, and and so yeah, Vegeta he comes back to life with his body. He gets his body and his life back later in the series. So ruining this great sacrifice right here. Then to top it all off, Vegeta's development, in my opinion, Vegeta's development was finished at the end of the in the Frieza saga when he got killed by Frieza. Vegeta should have left the series after that, but if he has to stay for another series, Vegeta's development was finally completed when he saw Trunks, future Trunks die at the hands of um Cell. At the hands of Cell and blindly in a rage attack Cell. Okay, in my opinion. I'm mixed towards that too because that's also Vegeta's fault because he could have killed so earlier but he let him reach his perfect form but that's when Vegeta's development was create completed that's when he showed he cared about someone else other than himself this Majin Buu crap was just a repeat of that the whole Majin Buu saga was just a repeat of what we've been seeing in the series and it was just dragging it out and I thought it was terrible but that's that's just me I also agree with Goku sacrificing himself being a um sad moment. The only problems I have with it is that uh he took Kai and Bubbles and them with him. But other than that, yeah, I, I get what they were trying to showcase there. The moment with um I think the Indian boy's dad is Upa. Didn't watch a lot of Dragon Ball, and that's my least favorite of the trilogy. But um I, yeah, that was a sad moment when General Tao killed um Upa. Upa's dad, yeah, um, Upa's dad and Krillin's death at the hands of Piccolo, Krillin's death at the hands of Piccolo, in my opinion, are mixed towards, I'm mixed towards because, yeah, it was sad, but, in my opinion, Piccolo's, Krillin's death, in my opinion, helped move, helped move the Dragon Ball story, which I thought was weak up until the TN saga, and I didn't really like the Krillin character in, Dra in, in Dragon Ball, he was cool at the end of Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z and GT, but I didn't like him in Dragon Ball, I thought he was arrogant, and a, just a crappy and boring fighter, but that is me, um, well, this was been, um, my review of the top 10 moments in Dragon Ball Z, um, top 10 saddest moments in Dragon Ball Z, um, I decided to do this video right now because um, I plan to do a, a little bit more Dragon Ball Z videos. Alright, Doug87988.